So I wanted to show how I start a career mode game, just pure vanilla and some tips and tricks of how to get science quickly and do the right contracts and some other maneuvers and stuff like that. So I'm just going to start a new game, call it quick start. Career, normal mode, difficulty, nothing special. Here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Mission Control and pick up some contracts. The first two should be pretty easy right off the bat. You're going to just get any amount of science from Kerbin. can even be from the launch pad, and then launch the first vessel. We'll accept those two. Next up, we'll go to the VAB and build the rocket. Let's start with the command pod. Put the only engine we have on here. Add some science. I'm going to put two mystery goo containers on here. Press X to increase the symmetry count. Down here, you can also just click this button. And put a parachute on top. Now, it's really important to check your staging here. Sometimes, depending on the order you assemble the rocket in, the parachute and the engine are going to end up like this. You want to make sure that they're in separate stages so they don't activate at the same time. The staging stack activates from bottom to top, so the engine is going to be the first thing that fires, and then the parachute will be the second. Okay. So we're going to try to maximize as much science as we can here. Uh, observe the mystery goo, so that's our first experiment. And then we can also right click the capsule and do a crew report. Here's a, a fun trick. You can EVA, mouse over Jeb's picture and click the EVA button, right click on Jeb and do an EVA report for a little bit more science. And then finally, there's a crew report sitting in the capsule there, uh, and it's going to stop us from doing another crew report once we're in the air. But if we take the data out of the capsule and then board again, now we have the option to do another crew report. Okay. So to launch, we're going to hit T for SAS, and then the space bar, plug in. Now that we're in the air, we can run the other mystery goo. More science. Quick note on uh, keeping versus transmitting. So the blue line is what you would get if you transmitted the data. The green line is what you would get if you kept it and recovered the ship. I don't have an antenna, so I couldn't even transmit it if I wanted to. Um, also, transmitting costs a lot of power. And as you can see here, it would give you less science for the same experiment. So it's almost always better to just keep the data. And then finally, we're going to do that other crew report. And then press space to activate the parachute. We can just speed up time here. I probably could have removed some fuel or reduced the thrust on that engine to make this go a little bit faster, but that's okay. Let's use time warp instead. I'm pressing the period key on the keyboard, and then slash will uh, cancel time warp. And then finally, mouse over the top of the screen and recover the vessel. So you can see we earned a good amount of science there. So we just finished the uh, first flight and now we go back to mission control oh, to find wow. the next set of contracts. So here's a note about these contracts. The ones with the black globe icon uh, they're offered by the Kerbin World First Record Keeping Society. These are the mainline progression, and you want to focus on these 
um, as much as you can because they'll kind of gradually lead you through the game. Everything else in here is randomly generated. Um, and you should ignore most of them. Uh, these things, you have to do at very specific locations, which can be hard to get to. Uh, parts testing, sometimes you have to do very specific altitudes and speeds, which may be very difficult to get to. So we're going to just focus on the world's first record-keeping society contracts. These are called progression contracts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, this one is actually interesting because this contract will we're going to be doing anyway. None of the other ones are interesting, but this one will actually do. If you don't have this contract, again, they're randomly generated. It's no big deal, but I will accept that one. Oh, yeah. Hey, McMaffey, welcome. Okay, so now we go into the research and development building, and this is where you unlock parts in the tech tree. There are three nodes we want to buy. The basic rocketry, which is, has the swivel engine. That's our first liquid fuel engine. Engineering 101, which has the thermometer. I think so the follow. Survivability, which has a barometer. So two strategies for unlocking science. You want to get better rockets so you can go new places, and you want to get new experiments so you can get more science when you get to those places. Um, in general, the top part of the tech tree up here is better rockets, and the bottom part of the tech tree down here is better science, and the middle part is uh, for airplanes. Talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, the next thing we really want to do is upgrade the astronaut complex. And what this is going to do is it will allow us to do the EVA when we're not on the surface. So we can do an EVA in space. And then finally, let's go build the rocket. So command pod again. Um, it didn't auto save my last one, that's fine. So let's put the science on here. Here we go, one, one. one thermometer and one barometer. Right about there. Put the parachute back on. Okay. So now we add our decoupler here. And that's going to cut off the rest of the rocket to make re-entry a lot safer and easier. One thing I like to do is I put the parachute in the same stage as that decoupler. Uh, and what that does is it's going to arm the chute as soon as I decouple the capsule. So I won't have to worry about actually activating the chute later. It's fine to stage the chute at any time. Um, it will just be armed, and then it won't deploy until it actually becomes safe to open. So now we add our liquid fuel tanks. Uh, we're gonna want six of these. You can do more if you want. Um, you can actually have a surprising number of tanks, but six is enough. And then for stability, uh, we add four fins at the bottom here. And that's it. This rocket can easily get us out of the atmosphere. No, you don't. The oh sorry, uh Matthew asked if you need to configure the parachute. So you might notice that this ship is actually really similar to the one that is in the uh built-in tutorial in the game, and they have you mess with the parachute settings. I would actually suggest never messing with parachute settings for a Kerbin. These are fine. Um, I think it has you like put the min pressure way up. And one of the reasons you don't want to do that is that min pressure is not related to uh, terrain. And so if you ever re-enter Kerbin um, over mountains and the min pressure is too high, your parachute might not deploy before you hit the ground. So the defaults are fine for Kerbin. Um, I would suggest not messing with them. You do want to change them for other planets, like especially Duna. Now, we know in this case that we're going to be landing in the water, so it's safe for this flight. But in general, I would just say leave them alone. OK, so these two new experiments, um, we need to run them on the launch pad again. If you click this little pin button in the corner, the windows will stay open. We're going to be clicking these buttons a lot on this flight. So you run those two. Now, again, like the crew report, um, 
you can run these more than once, but you have to move the data out of them in order to do that. So we're going to EVA and then take the data out and then board again. OK, so now those are ready to go again. So to launch, again, we hit T for SAS. Now this engine, this is a really common um, question really new players have. They'll hit space here, and nothing happens. And the reason is because this is a liquid engine, and it has a throttle. The throttle here is on the left side of the screen. Uh, your throttle controls are shift to increase, control to decrease, Z for max, and X for kill. So normally you would hit Z before launching. Um, I'll show you how shift works. So shift gradually increases it, control decreases it, and then Z maxes it out. Now, pretty much right off the pad here, we're going to want to tilt a little bit to the east by press, tapping the D key. And down here on the left, you can see how I'm just kind of tapping the right yaw. You don't ever want to like leave that yellow circle. Yes, X shuts off the engine, that's right. Um, so we're just going to tilt over a little bit so we land in the water, have a little bit of a nicer uh, ranch view. If you click this purple button down here, maneuver mode, that's going to show you the apoapsis, which is the highest point you're going to reach. Once that is around 80 kilometers, a little bit high, that's fine. Once that's oh, so 70 is the edge of the atmosphere. You want to go a little bit over 70 so that you have time to do science. And press X to kill the engine once it's over your target. Now, 18 kilometers is the boundary for high atmosphere. So now we can do another round of science. So I'm going to click our log temperature and pressure over here. Uh, we're going to run one of the mystery goo experiments. And clear report. Now, we're not going to EVA because we're still in the atmosphere and the wind might knock Jeb off the capsule, uh, which would not be fun. So now we're just waiting until we exit the atmosphere at 70 kilometers. Above 60 kilometers, it is actually pretty safe to do an EVA report if you're feeling really, really uh, dangerous. But I'm, I'm not going to do it here because it's not necessary. OK, we're over 70, so I'm going to EVA. Do our EVA report. We're going to take the data out of those experiments again. We're going to take the data out of the capsule so that we can do a crew report again. We're going to board. We're going to run the other mystery goo. Log temperature and pressure. Crew report. It's a lot of science, man. It's There are mods that make this whole collection process uh, easier uh, if you're interested. But we're not going to have to do this that many times. So I'm going to take these out one more time so that they're ready to run. Also, um, I'm going to collect the data from the mystery goo. This isn't probably isn't necessary. But if you take all the data and put it in the pod, the pod is the least likely thing to explode on reentry. Stuff stuck to the outside of the pod sometimes will blow up from the heat. Um, and if you take the data out of your experiments and store them in the pod, at least you're going to get the science back from it. Now, uh, you get this warning the first time you do this with Mystery Goo. Unlike the temperature and pressure experiments, Mystery Goo can't be run again if you take the data out, unless you have a scientist. A scientist is able to reset the experiment so they can run again. This is just warning you. It's not worded very well. Don't worry about it. Just click Don't Show Again and take the data out. I'm going to take them both. OK, so we're falling back down. Uh, I'm going to stage. Oh, one more thing. Um, you might have noticed uh, some green effects up here as soon as I exited the atmosphere, and that was the messages telling me that I had finished the contract. And if you mouse over the contract uh, button here, you can see the contracts have been completed. OK, so now we can stage. Over on the left side, uh, you'll see the parachute icon turned blue. That means it's armed. You can also confirm that by right-clicking on it, and it'll have the disarm button if it's been armed. And once again, we're just waiting. Can use time warp a bit here. 
So I don't even have SAS on right now. The aerodynamics of this should stabilize me pretty well. There goes the chute. So I didn't do temperature and pressure on the way up, so I'm going to do those now from, from low atmosphere. And then the crew report is actually one experiment that varies depending on what biome you're flying over. So the flying over Kerbin's water, this is actually different science than from when I launched that first flight. So we get a little bit extra points there. And now, if you're feeling adventurous again, once the chute is fully opened and you're moving pretty slowly, uh, it's actually safe to do an EVA report here. And we'll take these out again because we're gonna do one more set of science when we hit the water. pressure, keep those, crew report, keep that, EVA report, one more time, board, and finally recover again. That's a lot of science. 